Good afternoon, I'm Mike Slowey from Coastal Fertility Specialists here to talk to you about controlled ovarian hyperstimulation and intrauterine insemination. There are several indications for this. The number one indication is unexplained infertility with the second one being low stage endometriosis. There can be other utilizations of this therapy as well. The basics of what we're talking about are very simple. We're going to use fertility drugs to try to get one, two, maybe three extra follicles available. We're going to take the sperm, process it, and place it inside the uterus so that we bypass the major loss points for sperm with intercourse, the vagina and the cervix. And finally, we know that there are a variety of growth factors and hormones produced by the ovaries that has the potential to help tubal function and uterine function. So simply our goals in this therapy are more sperm, more eggs, better environment. Now there are several approaches that we can take for this. There are two major types of medicines, oral medications and injectable medications. There are three oral medications, clomiphene citrate or clomid, uh, tamoxifen, and letrozole or femera. Interestingly enough, all of these were developed as breast cancer treatments. Clomid in the 50s, tamoxifen in the um, 70s and 80s, and letrozole in the late 80s and early 90s. Interestingly, Clomid didn't work very good for breast cancer, while the other two are mainstays of long-term treatment for breast cancer. But each one of them causes the brain to feel like there is no estrogen around, and therefore the brain releases more of the hormone, follicle-stimulating hormone, which does exactly what its name says and stimulates the follicles to grow. Now, because the individual's feedback system is fully intact, these drugs have a very limited effect on getting multiple follicular development and therefore the pregnancy rates, even when adding intrauterine insemination, is not particularly high. The next set of drugs that we use are called gonadotropins. These are medicines that actually contain the hormone FSH. And what we are able to do is overcome the feedback system and therefore get multiple follicles to develop in most individuals on a very reliable basis. And that's where the pregnancy rate comes from. Now, a third option is actually what I call a hybrid cycle. It's a combination of an oral medication with an injectable medication. We like to use the newer oral medication, letrozole, because of its shorter half-life and fewer side effects. We take that for five days and then piggyback on to the end of that uh, several days of very low-dose gonadotropin. Usually folistim is the one that we use. Then when the follicles are developed, we are able to give the hormone HCG and then do the insemination at the appropriate time around ovulation. What this does for us is it cuts out five days of gonadotropin therapy, thus reducing costs. It also cuts out a couple monitoring visits, reducing costs even further. But the best part of that is, for about half the price of a gonadotropin cycle, we actually get the same pregnancy rate at about 20 to 25 percent per month. Now, typically, these types of cycles are tried in groups of three. The first three cycles seems to have most of the treatment effect. Approximately 85% of the pregnancies, if they're going to happen, will occur in the first three tries. Cycles four, five, and six will pick up some other pregnancies, but the pregnancy rate per cycle is much lower than in the first three cycles. So generally we try three, and then we reassess where we are to consider whether we should move on or not. The biggest risk of this treatment is multiple pregnancy. If I were to make a list of risks, one through 10, one through nine is multiple pregnancy. And it's a risk because you're designed to carry one baby at a time. Things like gestational diabetes, pregnancy-induced hypertension, preterm labor, which can all occur naturally in single follicle cycles, are many times increased in multiple pregnancies. So our goal is to try to avoid those. The risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, which can cause clotting problems and there are significant fluid shifts which can cause electrolyte problems, is actually in fact very rare in these types of cycles, particularly the hybrid cycles, because we're canceling for risk of multiple pregnancy before we get to a point where hyperstimulation syndrome comes into play. Overall, we believe these drugs to be safe and effective when used appropriately. Now, from here, we're going to go on and talk about other treatment options for if this option is not successful.